guys, how's it going? I am especially excited for today's project. You can see the evergreens in the back of the gator. You can see that we're standing in front of the new barn, which just feels unreal to me. And the sun is out, it's glorious. I think I'm gonna even take my coat off today. It's the end of December and it's beautiful. So here it is, there's the barn. We recently put out a video talking about this new land purchase. We showed you around and kind of explained how it all works. So basically the piece that I'm standing on right now, it's two acres and it sits right directly behind our barn and pond area. Uh, and this is where I'm hoping to one day have horses, possibly a couple of cows. We're going to create pasture out of most of the land that we bought. It'll be pasture area. There will be trees and things like that and a possible play area for the kids. There's also the basketball court. So right there, you know, the basketball court, which also kind of like serves as a tennis court as well. Uh, and then we were thinking of maybe putting a play set right out here, kind of like the play central area. But today I just wanted to focus on picking up some stuff that's here maybe doing a little bit of raking, not a tremendous amount of stuff. I'd like to put a couple of containers on either side of the barn doors, and that's where we're gonna put these really pretty fat Albert Blue Spruce trees, which it'll be perfect because we can enjoy them out here. They're not gonna need a lot of water. We don't have any water run out to these, this area yet. So uh, the water that they do receive will be either rain or from us. So it's just great to be able to use them in two different locations. I think the blue will look really pretty up against the red. I think that'll be a pretty color contrast. However, we are planning on having this painted in the spring. So we're gonna have um, the fencing painted black the barn will be white. Uh, so it will match all of our other outbuildings. That's the plan anyway, we'll see what happens. And then in here, I just wanna do some clean out. I just want to come in here. I don't even know. There's like boards with nails and stuff. Um, there's some old bags and, and such. So I just figured that we could do a little bit of clean out. There's some, yeah, not too much. Let's take a look out back here. In fact, I haven't even, does this just push open? What, what, how does this work? Oh, it slides. Right out back here, I'll probably gather up some of the stuff that I see laying on the ground as well. It's just a whole new exciting thing that, oh, I just can't even believe it. Ugh. Paul is gonna be coming around with the tractor with two containers. We've got two of those, um, are they the Twain containers from Unique Stone? They have little lion heads on the side and I think they'll work perfect for these evergreens. So he's on the way with those and then I think I'll see if he can fit the pallets, the extra pallets that we have on the tractor and he can take them back to our pallet pile. Real quick stats on the Fat Alberts here. Zone two winter hardiness, 30 by 15 is how big they grow. They'll probably continue to grow a little bit bigger than that if they're happy in their spot, but they're not like super fast growers. So they won't be 30 by 15 for a while. But Fat Alberts have just that beautiful, real silvery blue needle color that I love. And the growth habit, like the structure of them, a little bit more open than some of the other ones. And I really like that. Okay guys, let's just start in on this.
these mats are surprisingly heavy. What I'd like to do is set them gently on top. Okay. And then Clean them or? No, I'm just going to toss them. And then uh, pallets. I tried, so let's just film myself. That's awkward and it's gross. I've made pretty good progress out here so far, but I want to go see what's going on out here. Looks like Aaron's putting up the new basketball nets. Looks like he has one done. One done? One done. Nice. So my dad and Benjamin were the first two to come out here and try to shoot hoops. And my dad <laughs> texted me and he's like, this is not a standard height. This is way higher. Uh, Cause he's played a lot of basketball or he did play a lot of basketball. And uh, so sure enough, we measured them and they're 10 feet, six and a half inches. Yeah. Yeah, so they're six and a half inches higher than they should be, right? Supposed to be 10 feet. Right. So I've been trying to mull over like all the options. Yeah. They're pretty solid. I mean, like there's nowhere, unless you could find like a welder, but I think you'd kind of like ruin the integrity if you chopped it and then lowered it six inches. I don't know. There might be a way and to do it. And re-welded it. There's a lot of weight it's holding up. Yeah, there's a lot of weight. And so then I was thinking, you know, this, this concrete could maybe stand to be resurfaced. And I don't think concrete is like, the standard material that people use for tennis courts and basketball hoops. So maybe what we do is we like raise it six inches <laughs> and just leave the hoops. Cause I want to say that there's like some type of a rubber surface or something, but that probably, I don't know how much concrete that would be. Cause you'd have to add more concrete and then another different type of surface. And do you know the size of this? Have you measured it? No, I haven't. Is this standard for tennis? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I have to come out here at some point. I probably need to look at like, I know that there's different sides of basketball courts too. Like the three point line on a professional court is different than like a high school court. Mm. So I probably would want to fashion this more after like a high school court. Yeah. You know, for Benjamin and Samantha, because mm -hmm. that's probably what they would be playing on if anything. So anyway, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to do some measuring, but I figured a, an easy step was just to put some new nets on here for now and just yeah. Leave it. Leave it just at that. Practice at the the at the iron. wrong height. At the wrong height. Yeah. They're pretty easy to put on, aren't they? Yeah, they're not too hard. Whoa! As long as you don't have a fear of heights. Yeah. Way up here at ten feet six inches. <laughs> Boom. Nice. Done. You want to shoot a hoop? Try out the new net. All right. Oh, that was so you know close. What? That would have been good at a 10 foot hoop. <laughs> yes. Oh, nicely done. There it is. Okay, I'm going to go carry on. I've got one more stall left to clean out. And then there's just a few little things on the back side of the barn that I'm gonna pick up, just a little trash and stuff. And Aaron brought me over a bucket full or a watering can full rather of a uh, water. So I had water in the evergreens, which would definitely look better up against the red siding, but I need to work on the soil level first before I move them out. I think green would show up better in front of the kind of faded out wood there but I can't really move the pot over to the red because the land or the soil slopes down. So I guess when the doors are shut. Yeah, when the door is shut, you can definitely see it better, which I'll probably shut the doors at the end of this anyway. So I think we're good. Wash these off, give them a good drink.
right guys, I think I am done for today and I really like how things are shaping up. First of all, our entryway, we have a little fluff now, which is so pretty. And again, when we shut these doors, which I will show you uh, once we look inside, we'll be able to see the contrast of the blue spruce with the red siding a little bit more. But just stepping in, it's so clean. So look at this area right here. I just pulled pretty much everything up off the ground, the garbage, the broken pallets. I did save two big pallets uh, because they're pretty nice. They're nice platforms um, to put hay on. Anyway, I don't know if we'll use them, but I did save them. And I came across the cover, the plastic cover for one of the lights, which there's no electricity in here right now. It's all turned off. And I'm thinking I'm gonna probably get different lighting put in. I don't know, we might use that too. There's one, two, three on either side, but I kind of want to drop three lights down the center here. Uh, anyway, I did save it just in case, but I have no idea what the best setup is going to be for this area, you know, to store supplies and such. And I feel like it'll be an evolving process. I'm just going to look at some pictures of how other people do it. Plus Bethany, you know, who helps us out here in the garden, her passion's actually horses. Uh, she has six of her own. She brought a few, she brought two of her horses and a pony here. Uh, in the fall just a few months back and had the kids ride I got to ride and anyway she's I think as excited as I am about this and she sends me links to horses all the time <laughs> uh, I keep telling her Bethany we got to get water we got to get electricity and she, I think she's like let's get on it let's get some horses in this barn first stall just gave it a good rake that's pretty much it for all the stalls but I think it did make them look nice nice and tidy right in here this one actually had cow droppings cow pies in here so i don't remember seeing a cow i did take the sanchez sign down and i put this little plaque one of you guys sent this out and i've been hanging on to it it's probably a little small for this area but i'm thinking we could put some other things around it and it's just this perfect little touch for now isn't that pretty and then out the back I picked up just any loose pieces of twine, any bot empty bottles, anything like that. Just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Now I left this bag because there is still active water in this and there's shavings around. So I don't know if maybe this isn't buried deep enough and they're wanting to, they were putting that there for extra heat, like extra insulation. So I don't really want to mess with that. And then right here, there was like some pond liner or pool liner or something like that. And I don't know if that's where they stood the horses to, to bathe them. I'm not really sure, but it was, you know, I had seen better days. So I rolled that up and got rid of it. And this whole area, we're going to be taking all this down, all the fencing, all this, all of this. And I want to bring in some dirt and we're going to make it a little bit more flat. Probably, let me stand back here. You can see how the land starts to slope right away. And I want it to be level, like all the way out to probably about here. So fill dirt all the way around this with a nice fence around it uh, and a retaining wall and just a, I don't know, a little less treacherous terrain here. So we'll be going through areas like this and just pulling things out. Uh, any old fencing, I know they kept pigs down here at one time too, but like stuff like this doesn't feel really safe to have around with animals. I don't know. There's some things down the hill there. Kind of want to walk down this way. We didn't walk down here during the tour. You can see there are some sprinklers. I hope maybe you can see those. And I don't know what those are tied into. I would like to have our actual pasture fence start up here on more level ground though. And then I kind of want to just blanket this with wildflower seed. I think that would be so, so pretty. And I uh, would keep, I don't know, keep everybody off of it really. Okay, let's go down this way. I think this is a little structure for the pigs right here. Now looking back up through the trees toward the barn and see kind of what the lay of the land is. Where are the, oh, the horses, there's two horses on this property and they're over there right now. They're super friendly. Yeah, so it just goes all the way back down here, kind of behind this little hut. And Aaron thinks that there was at one time maybe an irrigation ditch that ran through here. We're not positive. But there's a big, it looks like a big pump of some kind, I don't know, and it goes down into the ground. So I'm not really sure what the story is here, but that's where the property line ends right there. So we're going to come in and kind of clear out all of the, the weeds and stuff like that. Any of the scrap pieces of wood, um, yeah, just kind of slick it up a bit, 
toss some seeds in. I think that would be awesome. And you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I have just been so looking forward to this day. I mean, the fact that the sun was out for the majority of today's project, it was warm, and I've just been wanting to get my hands on the inside of that barn. It's just been so, so nice. I love it. And I'm so looking forward to bringing you guys along just for the whole process. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. P.S. I forgot to close the doors. Let's take a look once they're shut. Oh yeah, those evergreens look awesome next to the red. I knew they would.